next guest wrote an op-ed this morning saying, quote, the need to raise the debt ceiling is a symptom of the broken budgetary past characterized by massive overspending. President Barack Obama's bill is coming due. There is no cash on hand and the debt ceiling will have to rise. Douglas Holtz Aiken is the president of the American Action Forum and also a former Congressional Budget Office director. Doug, always great to have you back on the program. Now, Thanks, you, Betty. you don't really believe that the debt ceiling won't be raised, right? Uh, I do believe the debt ceiling will be raised. What I'm afraid is that people will mistake that as a, a victory of some sort. The debt ceiling is a symptom of a problem. The problem itself is the debt explosion that's happened already and will continue to happen unless the United States changes course. So our fundamental problem is that we are on track to, to run squarely into a financial crisis because of the government's budget outlook. And who do you blame this on? Well, I, I think there's no question that if you look at the president's budget, um, he presumes that the economy goes back to, to performing beautifully, that he gets all the tax increases he's talking about, and we're still running a deficit that's nearly 5% of GDP, and the debt-to-GDP ratio is exploding. So that's not a plan for a country, and I think uh, it, it really is something that no administration ever should, should have put out. Doug, this is Peter on Capitol Hill. What do you make Hi, of the, the, the talk of Armageddon with uh, regard to the debt ceiling, the threats we've heard from the uh, Treasury Secretary, and at the same time, the message from a lot of Republicans, listen, it wouldn't be so bad if we actually did reach that August 2nd deadline. Tell us what really happens on August 2nd. You know, a lot of people talk about letting, uh, you know, letting this go past and not raising the debt ceiling, but it doesn't add up. We're bringing in about... $2.3 trillion in revenue right now. Uh, you could pay the debt service. That's $300 billion. You'd have $2 trillion left over. Mandatory spending, the Social Securities, Medicares, and Medicaids are $2.1 trillion this year. So you could pay most of that, but there's a $100 billion haircut in the farm programs or Medicare or somewhere, and that would leave zero discretionary spending. Zero for troops, zero for highways, zero for education, zero for basic research. That, that just doesn't add up. So mm. we're going to raise the debt limit. Uh, we have to. Uh, and they will do it in usual congressional fashion. There will be rhetoric, finger pointing, and it will happen at the last second, in my view. Uh, but, Doug, let me just ask you a very simple question. Why is it such a big deal this time around to raise the debt ceiling? It's been raised, what, eight times during the Bush administration? Why? I, I think there are two reasons. Uh, number one, uh, the public's, uh, you know, recognition of the deep problems of the federal government is much higher now, and they're angry about the spending, and they're angry about the debt, and it shows up in all the polling. Uh, nine out of ten Americans opposed uh, simply raising the debt ceiling. I mean, it's very, very powerful. Second is mechanical. It used to be that the House had a parliamentary procedure that allowed them to avoid uh, voting on a debt ceiling increase, and that left it to the Senate. And in the Senate, there was a bipartisan conspiracy that those people who weren't up for re-election voted for it, those who were voted against it, uh, those days are over. So everyone's now being put on record, and they don't like it. Doug, uh, on the Gang of Six, you've heard the talk that Tom Coburn has stepped away from the negotiating table. What do you make of that? Is the Gang of Six effectively dead? I think it's an important moment, uh, both because uh, uh, Senator Coburn has been a, a genuine leader and, and shown great legislative skill in this, but also over the substance. In my view, uh, if you want to be serious about raising the debt ceiling, it's accompanied by, by, by policy changes that cut spending in the near term, discretionary, but also in the long term. And that would be entitlement programs, in particular Medicare. The, rumor, the reports are that he stepped away because of the unwillingness of Democrats to get serious about Medicare. Uh, if you look at the budget, Medicare is the long-term uh, spending problem. It is the long-term debt problem. To keep it off the table is, is actually to be in defiance of political of uh, fiscal arithmetic. Right. As you wrote, it has to be on the table. Uh, Doug, no thank way around it. Doug, thank you very much. Nice to see you, Doug sure. Holtaken of the American Action Forum.